Hi guys, welcome back to the Gabriel Farmstead. Um, it's been a while, I think since we uploaded, maybe it's been two weeks. We had to travel for holidays um, to the farmstead and uh, I just didn't get the time to film anything. <laughs> you want to say hi? What are you talking about? You want to say hi guys? Oh my god. Anyways, so um it's time for us to film for you the tour of April. We are at the beginning of April and I remember if I remember correctly we did our March tour at the beginning of March. The garden is doing really well guys. Um I came back last night and um honestly it have pleasantly surprised me. I feel like it's the best time to do a tour because you'll be able to see just how much um, the garden has been transformed. We received a few days of rain, I think two to three days of rain, and um, it's just beautiful and amazing what rainwater does to a garden. So we are starting right here on the tomatoes. First of all, I want to show you some of these. This is a beef steak tomato that is already producing. It's one of my first tomatoes that didn't die off. I had a problem with my tomatoes because um, the four tomatoes we planted, out of those, only three survived. I mean, only one survived and three died. Um, so this is a beef steak tomato. It has started producing. Like I said, um, it's one of those that survived. You can see here, they are having a lot of suckers that I didn't prune off but um, i pruned the other two this one i left because i wanted to show you how to prune tomatoes so you can see this is a sucker and we need this sucker gone why do we want to prune off the suckers uh, last year i didn't prune my tomatoes and they were so bushy way bushier than i'd like at this at some point i probably will stop pruning this too because our sun gets so harsh and the tomatoes get sunburned but for now i am going to continue pruning them and how you do it you take that sucker and you just push it to the side and it snaps right off so one sucker gone there's one here um also push it pull it and then it's gone there's this little one here the same there is this little one here the same and like i said for now i'm going to be pruning off all the suckers eh? i will come through and prune off so as many as i can uh, but at some point, I will just stop and let the tomato do its thing. Um, when you prune off the suckers, the tomatoes um, redirect their energies into making more fruit. And that's what I want right now. I planted these tomatoes very late. Oh, look at this one. This is a very huge one. I don't know whether to leave it. It's already producing or whether to... Maybe I can leave that one okay this one have to go oh and it have already started to producing i don't know i don't want to prune off my tomatoes but i also want to get good size like i was saying um so the suckers take when the plant have so many suckers it redirects its energy from making the fruits into the leaves or, or growing those suckers and that's exactly what i don't want in these tomato plants the good thing is that when you leave the suckers, if you are from a very hot, dry climate like us, um, it allows your tomato to become bushier and your fruits don't get sunburned. So like you can see this cluster here is directly in the sun. There's a shade net that I had put up when they were younger, but now the tomato have grown relatively bigger. I have to lift this um, shade net up just to cover this plant. So these are way at risk of um, getting a sunburn. But if I hadn't pruned off this sucker, <laughs> if I hadn't pruned this sucker, then they will shade out the tomatoes. And that's why you are seeing that I'm hesitant to prune off all my suckers. Um, so we will, I will prune off until a certain stage, then I will leave them. I wanted to show you some of these. This is a little one. Come here, my love. 
this is a very small one that I just planted. There was a big one of this um, st stage. Oh, this also had fruits. That was for me. Yeah, but anyways. So this one was, there was one that died off that would have been this this size. Anyways, these are small um, um, onions that I just put here. Because onions um, repel pests, and I had so many mealybugs in my garden last year. In fact, my tomatoes were killed off my mealybugs last year. So I put tomatoes in there, to, I mean onions there, just to try and repel. The problem I did is put hibiscus so close, because I realized that Roselle hibiscus is loved by mealybugs. And um, that's a fight I'm willing to put up this year, because fam, I want to have that gem, and I will have the gem. Anyways, um, more more small tomatoes that I just planted. This one was more advanced than that. And I think these are all beefsteak. This is the pear-shaped tomato. You can see that it has already started producing. Um, it's not as big as the um, steak, as the beefsteak, but um, it's um, in the middle of this and those. So the beefsteak is bigger. And then follows this. I will have to come and tie this. I don't have tomato cages yet. Please don't ask me why. Because I said I was getting some last year. And I still don't have. It's just one of those. you know. Um, this is also a pear shape. You can see one of its first fruits here. Quite big. Eh? Soon enough it probably will be ripening. And we'll start getting our own tomatoes from the garden. And then. Yeah again. There is this one also getting suckers let me just remove the small suckers this one was also planted with the other ones there's so many uh, thorns this is all thorn plants that came from the goat manure that we used this I will repeat again is one of the downside of using uh, uh, goat manure because here the goats are eating um, a lot of um, thorn bushes especially during dry season so when you use the um, manure especially that ours was not really composted you are going to pick thousands and thousands and hundreds of thorn bushes and every time you pluck them out whenever you water there's thousands again it seems like they just don't finish yeah it's hot guys anyways um next is our beans these beans are doing really well. Oh my God. When we left um, last week for holidays, these were very small, but you can see, like they were literally this and this size. And you can see they are, like this one is ready for harvest. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we are going to have beans here. And especially because we just came from the farmstead. It has been a horrible dry year for us. We are hardly getting any harvest from there and um they don't have beans at all we didn't eat any beans and people are in the middle of eating beans and uh, bambara nuts so because we planted a little patch here we are going to have some harvest exciting right yeah. right Papi? yeah and um the flowers uh, are they are so pretty oh my gosh there's so many ants that are on here um it's First, I was worried that maybe they are going to destroy our flowers, flowers, but I figured they are good for pollination, so we are letting them be. And there is roselle hibiscus on the sides, um, so this roselle should be getting its first fruits. I mean flowers, the calyx. You see, this is going to be a calyx, this is going to be a calyx, and um, this roselle it actually really struggled in the sun we watered and watered but no it still struggled but you can see after a few days of rain it just sprang up you know um, i'm so happy this is a green bean and these are supposed to be the owners of this side of the bed so like from this this is supposed to be for the bamboo beans and this is supposed to be for the green beans and they just didn't make it um, every time they came up they rotted right at the stem and uh, they just died off until i got so tired of replanting like this is my third planting or is it the fourth no i think it's the third planting 
and only one survived i thought there were two but i came through and maybe the other one died off as well so now this is the only survive um this is an onion that i also just put here there were a lot i'm seeing one two so only two survived in here and i know it's because of the sun it was just too hot again to try and repel those pests yeah um so all these uh bumble beans that i came later and planted in because i just didn't want them to be um empty you know would you look at this beautiful giant zinnia uh the the color is so beautiful but you know what i'm wondering i remember when they first came up there was bright red and maroon but now i'm only seeing maroon so it's a combination of maroon and yellow would you look at that this is a, it's a beautiful combination and guys no really it looks so beautiful it's yeah having a shop selling <laughs> guys apparently if we had a shop selling flowers would be rich by now i don't know about rich but yes we'll be getting good money um yeah so these are potatoes potatoes potato super potato if gabby was here he would be singing super potato from pepper pig fruits and vegetables keep us alive always remember to eat your five now recommend always remember to eat your seven <laughs> yeah that's a song in my house man so super potatoes and it helps my kids eat potatoes especially gabby mm. and we have a volunteer gooseberry that is doing really well yeah. we are not gonna pluck it out we're gonna leave it there uh we you see we were also suffering some weed so we were plucking out some of this in the morning but it's doing really well the mulch really helped this bed although we didn't match all of it we matched the areas that were struggling and they're doing well we have this beautiful flowers here the funny part is every time i keep saying i'm going to get um the names the variety and um I'm, i i didn't look for it yet <laughs> i forgot to look these are very small seeds extremely small seeds not getting any oh they're here they're stuck in here you see this small red thing these are seeds yo they are very small but at some point i have to come through with an envelope and try to collect some seeds because i want to plant this again next year they are um they have they have very good resilience to drought so i want to plant them again and they are just so beautiful don't you love them they are really beautiful okay we are in the corn bed oh look at the abraham booby hiding here gotcha i gotcha dude so we have these guys that are terrorizing our um corn that's why they're also known as corn yeah that's why they are also known as corn crickets yeah so these are very small but they are producing apart from the corn crickets or the abraham boobies there's also some of them that i think have worms these have really suffered in the sun it was just too hot it was not raining enough so they are stunted um we have a cucumber on this side but inside here we also have i think you can film it from that side the flower is visible we also have span specs um because we just wanted a ground cover we didn't add any beans in this bed so we cannot really say it's a three sisters bed but we are okay um in here we added um uh, the beetroots guys this has been a crazy year when it comes to planting. These beetroots, just like uh, the other plants, didn't germinate. Um, like some of these, you can see some of these are very small. Because I only planted them in. I came and then I transplanted and some of them died again in the sun. And then I decided I'm going to mulch and, trans and, and plant the seeds again. 
and i can see the seeds are coming up the first pl uh, crops are doing very well although these are three i don't know whether we'll get big bulbs from there but it's doing very well okay so like this one i think is going to give us a good sized bulb but the bulb is just starting okay so i'm hopeful um so this bed is supposed to be for carrots like all of it but the carrots um wrong season you can see like this is so there's are so many we have to come through and pluck out some uh we planted at the wrong season it's hot so we decided to mulch again and try and replant again um they have come up the good thing is that we are in april it's going to get by the end of april it's going to be um, a bit cooler so yes then we are going to keep this and get a harvest hopefully these are marigolds that are put in here because they repel the pests so we're leaving them here and these are beans that some of my kids planted the good thing with being a farmer is that um you teach your kids you teach your kids um how to grow their own food you can see these beans are so close together um there are some that are already plucked up like you can see we planted two two and i thinned them to one one but the challenge about thinning is that you don't want to thin while gabriella especially is here because she's gonna come through and pluck out all of them here we have um a squash that we planted in a sack i actually thought this was a thin pumpkin squash but i'm realizing it's a petty pen squash and I think we have some sort of squash bug or fly because every time that it's producing, we come back and uh, they have just rotted off. And it had a lot of fruits, you guys, a lot. But we didn't harvest a single from here because of the same squash fly. And I'm seeing mealybugs are also attacking it. Um, there's a cucumber plant that is being suffocated somewhere here, but I know I'm not worrying with it um welcome to our ark maybe you guys saw us yes her majesty putting this up um this is a butternut that have started going up we are having a sponge pack that have also started trellising this is a butternut that we grew in the pumpkin bed um it was being blown over in the wind so i just decided to redirect it here this is a butternut i think that we planted here I am thinking this is a Malawi village pumpkin that guys I unfortunately snapped yesterday. I was trying to redirect as soon as I came and uh, trying to put it up here. It snapped right here. Ah, I've never been so heartbroken like I was heartbroken yesterday. But it have taught me a good lesson and that is when there is enough water in the garden don't try and train up your um, pumpkin plants because they are going to snap this is a cucumber plant that is starting to have you see this little cucumber Yay! yeah so i will show you some other ones but yeah that is starting to produce which is really really good um okay Sorry. and then um our spinach bed we also planted a lot of spinach but a lot didn't come up i then transplanted some from my seedling tree these are the small ones but these bigger ones are doing well and we are already harvesting from there the good thing with spinach is that once you start harvesting you only need a few leaves especially for our family ha ah. what are you doing here there are so many there are so many anyways like i was saying we only need a few leaves this is a four coat giant and you can see it's starting to become really huge although not as huge yet it's doing well um and then the roselle hibiscus and the okra plant the roselle hibiscus is suffering especially because of the sun i'm seeing signs of a lot of mealybugs we came through and took off a lot of leaves from um the the okra and i think i will take out this okra entirely because it seems like it's the one that is um harboring all the mealybugs right now and i do, really don't want those mealybugs to spread so quickly to my rosal hibiscus 
but I have realized that every time we have to come through here and we have to take out um ooh, ooh, look at this. Somebody came to visit me and he came straight into my glasses. Wow. Um so I don't know what I was facing, I forgot. You can see here huh, this cone struggle, but you can see all these holes. These holes are made by a worm that should be some hiding somewhere here. Um, it have happened to a lot of our corn, which is annoying to say the least. Anyways, more potatoes. These potatoes are doing really well, and we have an amaranth that is doing really well too. But this one, huh, they, I feel like they are much better than the other one. There is a volunteer corn in here. Wow, man, this corn is doing really well. I wish it had five or six ears because uh, I wanted to hear very well. You get that? <laughs> Anyways, um, cucumber, I want to show you these and these. Yeah. So I think these are going to be some of our best cucumbers. Um, this is an English cucumber. Rainwater, guys. The miracle that we call rainwater. I'm praying that we receive at least um, a few more days of rain so that this garden can just bloom to its full glory. This is Mr. Gabriel's um, garden. Bed. Yes, garden bed. It's a three sisters bed that I'm not going to talk much about because this is his garden bed and he's planning his own tour of his bed to explain to you what he has been doing here just give you an update because he didn't do any single update since we started and i also know it's because he had so many challenges so i'm going to move away from this beautiful three sisters bed because the owner will record for you a full video that video will be all about him explaining to you what it is about what are the challenges he experienced how it's doing now how he's feeling and what are his feelings about the harvest so yeah and we are coming to this guys this bed is beautiful we have to harvest some of this gabriella do you want to come and get do you want to come and harvest so we are taking off yeah hey, are you a dinosaur Oh, you are a dino. <laughs> so this is the mini bell blend. That means they are minis. They don't get as huge as the California ones, but they are very delicious. So this is our pepper's bed. I've showed you this. I've shown you this bed so many times. Um, the chili or the Tabasco chili have really come through. This here is a new addition um it's called a big jack they have very huge peppers and i cannot wait to harvest from that this is a california wonder that was a survivor from last year it's being suffocated by the tabasco pepper honestly this tabasco pepper is so huge i feel like pruning off some um of the branches although i already did i think it's at the end of the season i'm going to trim it down because it's suffocating my plants you see, this is also a California wonder that is under the what, but it's it's producing, it's having something. I don't know whether you'll be able to see, but anyways, you'll be able to see from here. This one is also producing, doing really well. This cherry pepper, wow, it has been a good producer. The thing is, I don't like it much because um, the fruits, don't go very far they are very tiny but they are sweet and beautiful and they are good to eat as a snack but they are just cd they have so many seeds that i, I don't like i don't know Papi, whether you'll be able to film here or whether you have to come through here gabby do you want to harvest some some peppers oh you are gone okay So you see some California wonder have turned. I don't like that they turned already because really, honestly, 
they are not that big yet yeah they didn't bulk up this one was a defect here it's ready here it's not but anyways we are just putting those in gabriella's uh, basket i think i saw another one like this one i think we have to thin them down oh ha huh. i see why this one just turned it's because i think this yeah there should be a bug in here you see oh we have mealy bugs inside oh my god these mealy bugs are the worst anyways um there is a dahlia here that is starting to turn can they see it yeah that's starting to turn it was suffocated a lot but i'm just glad um it's there this is another big jet here so oh, you can see we are harvesting some tabascos and you can see that she's having a plastic because they are so hot if you want to have a regretful day just touch this with your own hands like pluck them with your own hands and their juice gets on your hands or your skin it's going to burn so badly you're going to regret it mm -hmm. okay um our last formal bed not last formal bed but for now we are going to continue this tour because there are parts of the garden i didn't show you yet and i'm willing to show them to you today so this just grew like all of them were like this size they were not taller than me and all of a sudden this thing just shot up and they have started producing i was very worried you guys where have this rain been like a few days of rain and my garden just it just blossomed yeah like boom yo this is a three sisters bed um you can see yes kind of i put beans here you can see i think when it rained some of the flowers dropped off this is a flower that fell off this is another one and i found so many abraham boobies um on in this bed but you can see the fruits are starting i know it's not going to be much of a harvest but it's going to be something why is it called three sisters because you see this bean hey eh? it's just because it's not next to a corn otherwise this should would be climbing up and it continues um, producing as it climbs up but now because i put it on the side of the bed it's now just hanging in the air when it have gotten um tall long enough i'm going to redirect it to the next cone and then it will get a climbing structure um you can see our cone is coming up but like this cone i'm suspecting there's a worm somewhere here um this one have been eaten on the tip by the abraham boobies you can see this so these are the abraham boobies and this is a perfect example of the caterpillars or worms that are in here you can see they have started um making holes and eating down the corn so you oh and another one is here this is a bad one so there's a worm in there and the dangers or the struggles of organic gardening is that i don't want to spray anything here i think another abraham will be ah i think the only time that i'm going to spray something here it's so squishy ah you know the squishy feeling under your feet i hate it yeah the only time i'm going to spray here is when we get very bad mealybugs those ones i have declared war against because they killed off my garden last year so this year i'm definitely going to spray there's no joke or doubt about that no the mealy bugs I, I, they're not winning this year why am i here it's because of this do you guys see this cone hopefully it's pollinated it's definitely not ready yet because the silk is still alive how do you see that your cone is ready to harvest an easier way um, to tell that your corn is ready is um, that um, the silk that I'm holding right there in the picture must completely have dried off. If it didn't dry up, um, it's just an indication that uh, your corn is not ready. Like you can see, ours is very much alive, so it's definitely um, not ready to harvest.
Also, each one of those silks, when pollinated, like I'm showing you, that's a male part of the flower. And then when the wind blows, the pollen then um, drops onto the silk. And when it does that, each pollinated silk then turn into a corn kernel. That's how you get many corn kernels. Yeah. So this is very beautiful. And um, yeah, so we are hoping to do a video for you one day just harvesting corn okay so um you can see in here there's one squash plant this one squash plant died at the tip on the other side uh because the sun was too much and now i can see it's redirecting and it's going out of the bed once it's a bit grown we are going to redirect it back in this is a survivor um gooseberry that survived from last year when we went for holiday it's starting to set its flowers or bloom so soon we are going to have a little bit of a few gooseberries not enough for jam obviously but will be enough for my kids to snack on um now that we are done with a formal garden i'm going to show you some parts of the garden some of them i might have shown you or might not have shown you but i'm sure they are going to interest you and i'm excited to show you those so let's go Here, we are having a very beautiful watermelon. There was a, pop, a papaya or popo that we planted in here, but then I don't know whether it got attacked um, by pests or by mites. It died off and it left this beautiful uh, watermelon. It has grown so well, such that it's even invading my neighbor's yard. The good thing is that um, I know that they won't mind having it. So I'm leaving it so that we are sharing the harvest. So some of it on my yard, some of it in their yard. And they also have watermelon plants that I'm sure will invade my yard yet. It's um, the good part of having neighbors who are also gardeners. This is a pumpkin that is giving me stress. Because until now, I'm not seeing a single fruit on this pumpkin. Like, what are you waiting for, dude? I want at least three or four pumpkins from this one plant. Um, anyways, I don't know whether I'm going to get them. But anyways, this is this. You can see the leaves are different. This is a game squash, I think. But like I said, I think I'm having a squash fly or something. You can see this one has also been eaten down. Okay, so here we are having a papaya that we put in. There were two, one was on the other side of the house, but the other one died, obviously, because it was just too hot. This is a volunteer butternut that was very little when we left. Here it is now flourishing. Um, this is a kumquat? No, wait. That's clementine. This is a... A new clementine. Oh, it's a clementine, yes. Um, I don't know whether it have taken yet because you can see it's not having new leaves yet since we planted it but i'm hoping that it will take because oh i love the citrus i really love it um and here another butternut plant do you know what this is toby this line no. this means there's an earthworm i think that's a good thing um yep it is this is a butternut that we planted where um, the, the sugar canes were and it's in together with a watermelon. So this is a watermelon and this is a butternut. You can see the clear difference um, in the leaves. There's also a span speck somewhere there. I'm sure you can see the blooms. And you can see my neighbor's watermelons are also invading. So my watermelons are invading her yard and even outside. Uh, it, they are just untamable. Our rosemary Mary is doing really well. But like I said, uh, our lemongrass is doing really well. Like I said, um, the, the sugar canes that were here were destroyed by termites. I don't know whether to put another one or I should just buy a tree a fruit tree and put there so yeah that's what's happening for now um in here is the sweet potatoes 
This sweet potatoes had so many uh, volunteer watermelons because we added some um, compost that had watermelon seeds. Oh, that's an Abraham booby, and it disappears so fast because obviously it's thick. It just made a getaway, disappeared. Anyways, it's looking much better right now. When we left, I was wondering because it was just not raining and there were so many patches. I love the fact now that now it's just one whole green space and people can really hardly see the compost or the ground in which it was planted. I am hoping for a better, a really better, my first better sweet potato harvest. So this year I'm just very hopeful. I'm hopeful that we are going to get at least three or four watermelons from this patch and at least can we get at least 10 kgs of sweet potato this is a weed that adapts very well that i want to pull out i hate this bed somehow because there is usually worms or caterpillars that i don't like here but um yeah my target is that we have at least 10 kg of sweet potatoes coming from here that's my target um and in here we have a sponge bag some more sweet potato um i i got this from from a friend and i actually this whole time i was thinking no maybe they are cassavas or yam and i got to find out they're actually sweet potato wow, wow guys wow and um, that makes me more happy because um i was thinking oh goodness so now what happened but if it was cassava we don't eat cassava i would have gone to ask for recipes we don't eat yam here in namibia although i know that it's a delicacy or a staple in africa i i just didn't want that whole thing of going to ask people for some recipes but anyways yeah man turned out it's sweet potato this one is another um game squash do you see what is happening I don't know. There's just a fruit fly or something or a squash fly that that keeps making dents in my in my wow. squash. But anyways, yo, this is like a small patch that I just put here because water gets locked here, and uh, we put a guava that is struggling because of the sun. But I also just didn't want not to have anything here, and we ended up putting that. The only joy so far at this patch is this. Tada! This is a watermelon. Oh, it's heavy. That I am shading with a box from the sun. And I'll keep shading it for now. Because honestly, huh, uh, the sun is so bad. And if I'm to have a single watermelon, I have to take care of it. There was a papaya here that ended up dying off because of the sun. So I'm going to buy another plant. I want to put a bigger papaya that will take before winter gets here because um, it might not survive winter because we get a frost that kills off papayas. And then this whole bed is um, my flowers. flowers bed. I love it, guys. I love this bed so much. Because if Tropic can give you just a slow mo, following it little by little, please just follow it. It's it's just beautiful flowers, guys. Very pretty. Um, it's on the side of the road. There are some like this one that died, and I can't say why. But it's fine because we have a lot more and because we had so many spaces we put some beans also in those spaces just to make sure that this whole place is green these are some of my first marigolds that are set in blue and i'm very happy to just kind of see them come to life i have three sunflowers i planted more but only this germinated i did two plantings in here because it was again just hot the flowers were not coming up and um, the second planting is those ones that are not blooming yet, the smaller ones. And the first planting are this. This poor flower, you can see, it doesn't even have roots, but it's still blooming because of the water. So, my brother came um, to help with the garden. 
and he didn't know that these were flowers and he decided they were weed he's plucking them out he actually plucked all of those out but because ah no stop picking toppy but because of their resilience they didn't die which is just and now we have beautiful flowers that are just on a stem that doesn't even have roots but they're really pretty we are still enjoying them so look at this these are all giant zinnias my first planting is giant zinnias and then the second planting i'm not sure because those are flowers that were given to me by a colleague oh so so guys even in this scorching sun what beats the feeling of being in a beautiful garden like this with flowers such as this to cheer up your mind really really beautiful knowing that you are in your own backyard you are producing your own food and just thanking the lord for a little bit of rain that came through i'm very sweaty probably very stinky but i would do this over and over again because i just enjoy having to please people like this is near the road and people pass by here and they just stand and stare flowers are like therapy too they give you that 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 beautiful distress feeling you know and I love giving that to our community, to myself, to my family. I also love producing my own food, knowing that I'm hopeful that um, this year beans are coming from my own garden, bean, uh, sweet potatoes are coming from my own garden, watermelons are coming from my uh, own garden. Oh, and most of all, corn is coming from our own garden. So all my favorites are literally coming from my own garden. Nothing beats them. And this is why I'm saying it's about time to start a garden. No matter how small, even if this flower bed is all the space you have, you can still grow so much food from this little space. And if you're saying you don't know how to grow food, I didn't just start growing food in a day. I also learned. So you too can learn how to grow your own food and become a master. I'm not yet a master. I'm hoping to become a master one day. But for right now, I am just glad and grateful that I'm producing for my own family. And I'm teaching my kids how to grow food. For them to know that food doesn't come from a supermarket, it's grown somewhere. For them to take care of Mother Earth because they know how important Mother Earth is to us. And just to take care of nature and to be in harmony, to live in harmony with nature. With this said, thank you so much for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. If you are new, please consider subscribing so that you can follow this beautiful little journey of mine and grow a garden. Happy gardening, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.